Hi you folks, how are we all doing today? My name's Luke. As always, I'm from Raptor Creations. Welcome back to the channel, guys. So in today's video for how to start blacksmithing or blacksmithing for beginners, we're going to be talking about quenching. So in one of my previous videos, um, when I'd injured my hand, I, uh, I did some reviews of some movie clips and TV clips. And uh, one of the biggest things in those movie clips is people quenching high carbon steel into water and I said that this is a very bad idea and I did sort of explain why but uh, I wanted to do a video on exactly why you don't want to do that and go more in depth into why we quench, what quenching is uh, and all that good stuff. So in today's video we're going to be talking about exactly what is steel, what is high carbon steel, what is quenching, why do we quench in oil rather than water? What exactly is happening during the quench? And I'm going to do a little demonstration on uh, what happens when you quench in water versus quenching in oil, etc. Um, so yeah, guys, let's get jump straight into it and figure out exactly what steel is. Right then, folks. So first of all, I want to say that this is a really sort of simplified explanation of steel and iron, high carbon steel, etc. This is blacksmithing for beginners, not advanced degree in metallurgy. Um, so any of you sort of brainiacs who know all the sorts of uh, all, all the really smart stuff, you want to leave stuff in the comments, please crack on. Uh, this is a real simple thing, so everyone can try and understand exactly what steel is, and. Um, exactly what high carbon steel is and what's the difference etc so at its simplest form steel is iron plus carbon equals steel it's a real real simple equation as to what steel is so iron is iron found in the earth iron ore it used to be put into bloomeries and, and stuff like that we now use blast furnaces and all sorts of other stuff which i have no idea about surely um but once you add a certain amount of carbon to that iron it becomes steel so here's a real quick graph here so at this end is wrought iron the wrought iron is is almost pure iron it isn't pure iron it's got loads of other sort of impurities and it has got probably a little bit of carbon in it uh, in fact the i found 0.05 to 0.25 percent of um carbon in the iron so this is uh you know, you see raw iron tables and all sorts of other stuff. And uh, this is basically pure, as close as we can get to pure iron. Raw iron's normally been worked with tools. It's normally been worked by a blacksmith to remove those impurities. That's what makes it raw iron for the most part. And uh, it's very, it's quite a soft material. It's very malleable and uh, quite easy to work with, etc., etc. Um, at the other end of the scale, we have cast iron. So this is iron that has been literally poured from a from a I don't know what you call it a crucible refinery whatever you want to call it um and that has a very high carbon content so um you have cast iron pans and stuff so cast iron is used where something needs to be strong and unbending shall we say but it also makes it quite brittle um so yeah so, so you know what I mean like wrought iron has a tendency to bend under stress whereas cast iron has a tendency to snap and break under stress so cast iron is, uh, the figures I've found is anything over 2% carbon in iron makes it cast iron. Um, and then we've got this bit in the middle, so you can see here and here, anything over 0.25% carbon and under 2% carbon is classed as steel. So that's, the, that's sort of like a sweet spot which makes it not too brittle because the carbon is what strengthens the material, but if you have a lot of carbon, it makes it very brittle and very very tough, but prone to snapping, breaking, etc., etc. And too little makes it too uh, too malleable and too uh, uh, able to deform it. So steel it sort of sits in the sweet spot, and this is what we call steel. So obviously, the lower the carbon content, the less uh, the less hardening you can get on the steel and the higher the carbon content which is what we would call high carbon steel is what we use for knives um, uh, tools etc etc there are other stuff like you know, stainless steels uh, tool steels and stuff like that as I said it's a real real simple explanation so steel and iron are very much the same thing it just comes under the how much carbon content they have inside of them so 
what we're talking about, normally when we're working with high carbon steel, we're working with sort of 0.6 to 1% um, carbon content. That's, that's normally classed as high carbon, I believe. And that's what we use to make knives for all you bladesmiths and stuff out there. And we'll go on to explain exactly what we're doing when we're quenching this type of steel and why we do it. So. Right then folks, so quenching, what is quenching, why do we quench, how do we quench, what happens when we quench, all good questions. So quenching is effectively us hardening high carbon steel to uh, reach its full potential and be what it needs to be, whether that's a, a knife um, or a certain tool or a, a, a die for a, a machine or something whatever it needs to be it needs to be hardened and then tempered and we'll talk about tempering really quickly afterwards but if you imagine that no, no, the steel normally sits these are all the different parts these are all the carbon and all the bits of iron and all the other things that sit in them they all sit this is how it would normally sit like and then as we heat it up and we start working it these parts start drifting apart and then that's what allows us to to move the steel while it's hot so as it's hot they come apart and as we start hitting it they start deforming and twisting and, and doing all sorts of other things and moving all about and they all sit like this yeah so now all of a sudden you've got this 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 you know this jigsaw puzzle that won't go together very well if you leave it like this so what we tend to do is what's called a normaling cycle normalizing cycle should i say on a uh, on a knife or something like that and that's where we heat it up to critical temperature so critical temperature is we heat it up to it's usually like a just above a cherry red but it's when the um the steel loses its magnetism so you, if you put a magnet to it a magnet won't attract to that steel that's that's what's called critical temperature there is a very scientific word for it and i can't remember what it is right now but we heat it up to critical temperature and then the steel is all like this because it's all we've been messing about a bit and then what we do is we hit its critical temperature and then we let it cool down in just in the normal air until it's cold again and what this does after a few attempts is it straightens all the particles back out into into alignment and then what we do is we quench now quenching is a rapid cooling of the um, of the steel and what that does is it takes these parts which are like this and they really quickly bang together and they lock together and it stays hard and exactly what we're trying to do so it goes as a, you know they lock together really quickly if we leave it to cool slowly they stay as they are they've got time to sort of move and stuff whereas we cool it quickly and these particles bang tighten together lock together and the material goes hard very very simple explanation there's far far more to it if you want to get into it then there are videos out there but again this is a very very simple i'm trying to let it so everyone understands here so the big question is why don't you do this in water surely quenching in water will cool it down quicker than quenching in oil and and you're exactly right but that's sort of the point if you quench high carbon steel in water the reaction of when that when all these particles quickly come together is too violent it's too um it's it's almost explosive it's, it's it's sort of they come together so quick you end up with cracks and deformities snaps all sorts of things because these are coming together at such a fast you know such a fast rate so what the oil is doing when we quench in oil is it slows that reaction down it's still a very quick reaction but it slows it down just to the point where they will lock together and not cause that sort of snapping breaking. Anyone who's watched Forged in Fire and they, you know, don't don't quench in the water and I don't hear any pings and stuff like that. So that those pings are, are the reaction of that all coming together and then it going bing and then it just snapping because the reaction was too was too violent basically. So folks, that's exactly why we quench in oil rather than water these days. So water has been used throughout history quite a lot, and you know there's certain processes that you need to do when quenching in water. But if we quench in oil, it gets rid of a lot of risk. Not all, but a lot of risk. And there, there's still people today who who quench in water mostly because it's all they've got, especially in the more sort of uh, uh, undeveloped parts of the world and stuff like that and they're s some of these knives and, and swords that come out of 
uh, water quench is absolutely amazing, fantastic. I so said, just look at the samurai and the Japanese. Like, you know, that's how they got the bending. The, you know, the, the, the metal will be straight and they're quenching water, and then it would, because there's like high carbon steel and then normally an iron on the top because of the softness, it would bend the steel, and that's how the katana gets its its famous curve, etc. So once we've got this very hard piece of steel, it's also extremely brittle. Um, like you wouldn't want to drop it or hit it with anything else because it would just snap probably into a couple of pieces so what we do is we temper I explained this in the other video but I'll do it quickly but tempering is where you heat it up again but to you know nowhere near um, the temperatures you were before a couple hundred degrees rather than almost a thousand and you'll see the colors changing in the steel you can do it with with torches I just put stuff in the oven and you know, I mean there's graphs and stuff and I can put a link below if, uh, for tempering graphs and stuff um, yeah so say you put it in the oven 180 degrees for two hours or something like that and when it comes out it's this nice straw color and what that's done is it it's basically drawn back the hardness kept most of the hardness but just drawn back the extra hardness it gives it a gives the knife or the tool that bit of flexibility so rather than snapping the second it touches anything it's going to be durable and usable so i'm going to do a real quick demonstration now of what happens when you quench high carbon steel especially i've got a real thin piece of high carbon steel here i don't know what this is to be honest i can't this from ages ago i made a chef's knife out of it but um i'm going to quench heat this up and then quenching water and we'll see what happens maybe nothing maybe it'll work perfectly fine and i'll look like a complete idiot but i'll also show you how brittle this is once it's being quenched and how careful you need to be right folks just had a uh, bit of a technical malfunction my microphone decided to pack up in the middle of recording there and it was just at the bit that i can't re repeat so um basically what i'm explaining in these videos and i'll put them somewhere um we're talking about critical temperature and how when you see your steel get up to a cherry red temperature it loses its sort of magnetism that's what's called critical temperature and that is when the steel loses that thing just as it loses it that is the perfect time to quench you don't want it too hot or too cold you want it exactly the perfect temperature which is just after it loses its magnetism on the critical thing so you should be seeing a little video of me attaching a magnet to a bit of steel on one end which is colder and it attaches and then I try the top end where it's hot and it's a bit cooler. Next you'll see me put in a piece of uh, critical temperature high carbon steel straight into water just like they see in all the movies um, and the thing I keep telling you not to do and then when I pull it out there's uh, quite severe cracking down the one side um, and this is again this is just simply down to the, the violence of that reaction in the water the water's cooling it too quickly so as, as i put it in there's a big ting you probably even see my wrist sort of twitch a little bit and then there's a uh, as i pull it out there's a massive crack down the back side which is obviously just ruins your workpiece and it's not worth it i'm not saying if we quenched it in oil it would have been much different but i guarantee that crack you know, i've never quenched an oil and had um had it crack like that and then i'll go over to the anvil just to demonstrate how brittle it is and i'll just knock the piece of steel this is the piece of steel knock it on the anvil and you'll see it just shatter into a couple of pieces and then i hit it with a hammer just to demonstrate exactly how brittle it is and how careful you need to be while um, it's in that state before you temper it and draw that draw the hardness back just to make it strong okay guys Oakley dokey then folks that's us done for today like I said you can go really deep into the sort of molecular structure of of steel and iron and what happens when we're doing this this and this I've just tried to give you a really quick really simple explanation of what's happening when we're quenching with high carbon steel guys um, so I hope this gives you a bit more information on that I hope it tells you what high carbon steel is what steel is in general uh, what quenching is, why we quench, and how we quench. So just remember, quenching oil, a lot safer. Not 100% safe, things can still happen, but a lot safer to quenching oil for your workpiece. And remember your critical temperatures when you're quenching. And that's it for today's video, guys. So 
please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Next week we're going back to R2. We need to keep cracking on with R2-D2. And I will see you next time, guys. Goodbye.